Okay, so the latest version of Lacquer is now out on Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which is based on RetroArch 1.8.4. It's only just come out, uh, and here's how you install it. So on Google, you want to do a search for Lacquer. The official site will come up at the top. Click on Get Lacquer. We want to go to Linux. Scroll all the way down to the bottom, and you'll find Raspberry Pi 4 and then download Lacquer. And that will download into your downloads folder. So then what you need to do once that's downloaded is load up Belena Etcher. Pop your micro SD card into your computer. Here's mine here. Select the image. And it will point to my downloads folder and you can see Lacquer is there. Click on that and click open and then flash. Okay, once it's written, uh, you want to eject the SD card and pop it back in again, because it won't be recognized unless you do that. And then you'll see it will come up here as lacquer. Uh, if you double click on that, and then go, uh, now this is an optional bit, but if you go into config.txt, uh, it will, there's a way of forcing it to stay at 1080 so you're basically adding some text to here now this is a separate file I have uh, and I use this to overclock uh, and I always overclock so uh, this line is to change to 1080 if you've got a 4k TV this is beneficial because it will it would try and work too hard with 4k so if you just pop that in I usually leave a space either side there you go um, and save that now I'm going to also add the overclocking because I'm I'm going to run this at 2 gigahertz. So just paste that in. And I, again, I always leave a space. I don't ever need to. I'm sure I may have read it somewhere. Hit save, and then you need to eject your card. Okay, so then you're going to need a USB stick with your ROMs on. I can't tell you where to get the ROMs, but if you Google, you'll find out information on how to find them. So if you double click on your memory card, and this works the same in Windows or Mac, you need to create a folder on your memory card, and it needs to be formatted in FAT32, uh, and call that folder RetroPie. And inside that RetroPie folder, and for some reason this USB runs really slow on my Mac, uh, you need folders for BIOS, configs and ROMs. The important one is the ROMs one. So if you double click on that and you'll see this is how you need to name all of the folders. So 3DO, AGS, Amiga, Amstrad, CPC. It's only important for the ROMs that you've got uh, and you can find the full list of this on the RetroPie website. Even though this is RetroArch that I've told you to download, I use my RetroPie stick because if you point it in the right direction it will find it all there. Uh, and it means that you can also use this stick in RetroPie or RetroArch, doesn't matter if you switch between the two. Uh, and so for instance, if I was to pick something like SNES, double click on that, and you'll see that there'll be some SNES ROMs in there. Coy, this is running slow. There's something wrong with this USB stick, but it works all right in the Pi, and it weirdly works all right in Windows as well. So there you go, there are my SNES ROMs, uh, which are in there. So we need to eject that, Pop that into the USB socket on the Pi, doesn't really matter which one, and boot it up. Okay, so this is what will happen uh, when you boot up. So we've put our SD card in the Raspberry Pi uh, with the lacquer files on it, or RetroArch. We've put our USB stick into the USB socket with the various folders, so the RetroPi folder with the ROMs folder, and we've put the ROMs that we want to play inside the ROMs folder. That's a really important bit. Okay, so this is how it shows up. So initially, if you've not used it before, it does look rather confusing. Um, the best thing to do now is to tell it where our ROMs are. So if I go to plus uh, and scan directory, I can go down to my USB stick, which is called 32 gig. Uh, so I click on that uh, and then RetroPie and then just scan this directory because we don't mind if it finds the BIOS and the configs. If you're, Some systems require BIOS and config to work, but just try them with the ROMs first 
uh, and then if something doesn't work then you know you can go back to that but that's where you put your various BIOS and configs something like the Amiga would need that so we go down to uh, or we'll just do scan this directory so we're scanning the RetroPie folder this will take a while on mine because I've got quite a few ROMs in there and you can see down the bottom it starts showing what it's finding and it looks like it's going to take ages but it's not it won't be too bad if you want to find more videos of uh, running retro games or just operating systems or anything on the Pi, uh, as I come across things that I find aren't that easy to do, I kind of try and make them a bit more simple. Okay, so that's finished. So let's go back. And now what you'll find along the top row, uh, and back and forward is usually A and B buttons, uh, we've got various different consoles where we've got, so that's Game Boy Advance, uh, Game Boy Color, N64, and so on. Um, so basically, if we want to play some of those ROMs, we just need to click on the right one and start to play. So if we try PSP and run, and then look for PlayStation Portable there and run. Let's just go for a free ride just to see that it works. See the menus seem nice and fast. And there are obviously different things you can configure and things like that uh, to basically get things to look better and perform better. But as you can see from this, from a speed point of view, it seems to be pretty good. Oh, well, I thought I landed pretty straight. Maybe lagging a little bit. I need to probably press a button when I'm in the air, do I? Oh, it's not that run there. <laughs> right, so press the home button on the Xbox controller and go back. Uh, and let's just try one more game. Uh, so Dave Mirror Freestyle BMX. And as you can see, it suggests things that it might run on. Obviously, this is a PlayStation ROM, so it's going to run on that. And we just skip past all of this. And it looks like it's configured all the buttons as I would have it, uh, well, as it would be on the PlayStation, which is handy. Sometimes you'll find if you configure, uh, you, you know, something can be slightly wrong, uh, but, uh, but this has got it right. There we go, and running perfectly well. If you watch my channel, you know I play this all the time. <laughs> Uh, actually, I've started playing the PlayStation 2 version um, on the PlayStation 2 a lot more, but I still love this. I think this has got better level design. It doesn't look as nice, um, but the the gameplay is is super nice on it. Apart from when it crashes, <laughs> which I, I haven't had that before. Uh, so uh, I was just going to see because I saw that Amiga. I've got some Amiga ROMs on there, and it said that it supported the Amiga, but I can't see the Amiga on there. So let's have a look at uh, open load content. Let's go for my storage and the ROMs. Yeah, 32 RetroPie ROMs and Amiga. Yeah, I have got some stuff in there. So let's just try, and it does come up with those two as an option. gone black for a while. Weird because my screen capture device is still on. So I guess I'll go back to that. Close content. Okay so that's my first look at Lacquer 2.3.2 or with RetroArch 1.8.4. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.